Bring me, bring us something that is unique, well, let me only to let Jesus me and the, the Father. First, and then you'll see why we're saying that Jesus Yeah, but bring something unique. Because you're wasting first, time. That's all. And then you'll understand why. Okay, we're go on. Bring the full list. Go on. Because all these attributes together is not attributed to anybody else. I give you Elijah okay? raising the dead. Not all these qualities. It has to be all of them. The package. You may have where. Jesus, yes, did miracles, others so you're did saying miracles. saying some people have attributes of God, but certain, Jesus has all of them. Certain attributes, so where, where attributes God allowed, God. where God allowed. But the, when you look at the level that Jesus was attributed, that's a little bit different, because it's a far more special, specific case. And you have to look at it in its entirety. So you have to pick up all the qualities. He's the one who's going to give life. He's the one who's going to be given. It clearly says that Jesus is the one who gives life. In John 14, 6, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So it's only through him, through him, can you get to the Father and receive life? Only, so that is a very specific and only attribute given to Christ, well, not given true. to anybody else. Let me continue. So that's, that's, that's not true, thing. but carry uh, on. Yes, it is. That's so not then true. we've also got where, where Christ um, also made all the heavens and all the earth. He was there at the beginning. He was there with the Father creating the heavens and the earth. Okay? So that's another thing. He was eternal. He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. These are the attributes that are only given to the Father, to God. Even nope. in the, even in the uh, uh, Quran, some of these qualities are only given to Allah. These are uh, attributed in Scripture to the Son. These are attributes of God. Okay. Melchizedek, first and the last as well. So, but but. What I'm saying Everything is, you see other people have it, come on, but you but know nobody's that. Nobody's got all of this, the total entire. Well, there's no God who says I can of myself do nothing either. So what about my, that? So here's my point. So, so once we've got all those attributes and you see them in... By the way, are you done? Or you got more? Almost. Okay. Almost. So he can give life, he can, he can create Elijah. life, he can create life, he can uh, resurrect, he can... He himself was he resurrected. He can do everything God. that God does. He's got all the attributes of the Father, he's given to the Son. Um, and I can give you uh, all the scriptures on that. Oh, you can give all the scriptures on that? A, a good Make number. Sure Why don't you give us the scripture where Jesus says, I'm God? How about that? Let's start with that. The yeah. most important thing. He's got John 8, which is the, the I am. So you say again? That he's the I am. He's the I am. I am doesn't mean God. But, but the Father, as I said, the Father calls his son God. Where does the Father call him God? Hebrews 1 8. He also calls the judges God. Does, are context. they God? Huh? Different context. Or what context? Because if you're calling your own son yeah. God, what think context do you think that means? Do you think you're well, you also call the... Do you think you're calling your son a false god or false not? Okay, the sons are... That doesn't know the meaning. Ray, Ray, he called the judges as and gods say, and the sons of the Most High. When you see, see the he doesn't father, listen to anything. When you see the father calling the son god, in terms of the context of everything else attributed to the son, that is the only conclusion... No, no, that's not true. No, the judges were called, you are gods and you are the sons of the Most High. He will not respond to that. He will not respond to that. Because just like Jesus... Just like Jesus, just like Jesus was the son of God in the Bible and he was called God. Similarly, the judges were called the sons of the Most High and they were called gods. So was he lying when he okay? called them gods? Yeah, in a different context, a term is used in many different Same ways. term, gods. No, no. Same term. No, Same term. No, God, false gods. Well, he, did, he, he doesn't say false god. false god. He doesn't say false god. So are you telling me he calls his own sons false gods? Does he call his own sons false god? It's in, in that context, they're clearly... Does he not. call his own sons false god? Not in those words. So in what words is it false god He's then? talking about gods in a different context, not as in okay. the actual god. The Did god he also the call them things. sons of the Most High? May have done, yeah. Not may have done. Psalms 80 to 6, I'm giving the reference. Oh, okay. Check it out. Yeah. So the but sons of the... Wait a minute. When, he say, when he calls them the sons of the Most different High... Context. Wait a minute. When, you tell me the context of the sons of the Most High here. Go on. How do you understand the sons of the Most High here? I'll have to look that up. Yeah, he has to look up everything. No, so the, in terms of Jesus, it's a different context. When it goes, no, no, but because so I've, I've seen everything. this. No, everything I that I've asked you. No, no, for you. everything. I all the qualities Ray, of Christ, Ray. And I've even when it came to Jesus, Jesus, for example, so John 17, 3, he said he hasn't looked it up. And when I asked him to, uh, to define it, he started waffling, saying he's talking about false gods compared to the true God. Yes. So when Jesus makes a clear statement that the only true God is a father, he disputes that. He says, no, it is not only the Father, it is he also the Son and the Holy Spirit. Himself. You see what I mean? He did not exclude himself. And when you look at all Well, he does. When he says the only true God is the no, Father, no. he excludes everyone, including no, himself. Your Unless you're telling me that Jesus doesn't version. know what he's talking about. So you understand God that's better than Jesus. Version. No, it's not my version. It is. It came from your lips. It's got to be your version. Okay, the, these are not from my lips. 
The Father is the only true God, not from my lips. It's from Jesus. John 7, 3. Your interpretation of the context. Only true God, not my interpretation. You know why they want to twist? Because they want to include the Trinity into everything where there isn't one. So, so I'm going to read to you uh, John 17 verses 1 to 5. And this is where we're going to get the context. This kind of blows out the whole point of reading. Okay, go on. Make sure you don't exclude so, anything. Uh, I'm going to read verses 1 to 5. Okay? Good. And I'm going to stop at certain points because I've got a feeling you're going to skip through it and just let it go past you. And I want you to. No, oh, you didn't give me that I'm, opportunity. I'm going to let you <laughs> stop and have a, you know, contemplate some of these points. Sure, no problem. Okay? So when Jesus spoke these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hours come, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Okay? So we've got already a very uh, interesting situation where the Son is glorifying the Father, the Father is glorifying the Son. No, 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 you misinterpreted it. You misinterpreted the word. He's praying to the Father to give him glory. You're joking. I read it again. Yes, read it again, please. Glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. It's a prayer. It's a prayer of Jesus. Why and is... There's a glorify guy in both. Okay, Ray, Ray, here's the important... Bro, bro, here's the important bit. Ray, Ray, listen. Can, tell me this. Someone who has created all the heavens and all the earth, yes? All of a sudden, is praying to someone of a higher authority to give him glory. Right. So let Where me is the... So let me where is the logic in that? In Philippians 2, when yeah. Jesus became man, he humbled himself. Which means? So, so which means what? It's, which means he became a god or non-god? He, he lowered himself in, in some way that allowed him to take on flesh. That's Greek. Lau, lau, it's Greek. It, it, it doesn't matter because the it verse itself, the, the verse itself, is difficult to interpret on its own. You have to unpack it as you read through what he meant. Okay, by. go on. Tell us what so, Philippians so, means. So what, 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 what does it mean in Philippians? When he humbled himself, yeah. he took on flesh. And when he took on flesh, he became both human as well as divine and as we can clearly see from scripture there are times as human he exercised his humanity so that he could breathe he could suffer he could be like you and i did he lose so, his glory so, when he became a man so right did he lose his glory yes what kind of a wait what kind of a god who is fully god doesn't have glory he a false god as well as he humbled himself that's it it's a false god who doesn't have glory. No, no, no. Only a false god will ask someone else not, of a higher authority glory. for glory. He didn't say that he didn't have glory. So why is Jesus he praying for glory if he already had? He just did not oh, have man. the glory that he had at the beginning. Because it talks Which about, means a divine glory. It talks about... A divine glory. He doesn't have a divine about, glory. It talks about... I've got a few cents with miracle. But if... Um, it talks about, when you read the scripture, it talks about how he will ask for that glory back that he had with the Father at the beginning of time. Which means so he lost his divine glory. Originally, it's not so much lost, but there was an agreement that when he became man, that he... He, he, he what? He, he negated his... Negated? Move, whichever way you want to describe it. It means that he didn't have it. It means he lost it. Just say it, come on. Yeah, you're, that's, Bring it out. Lost, he lost his lost. glory. He may that's why he's is. asking his father, he the God, his, is, his God. But he's not... He didn't have it. He just didn't have it, yeah. That's a better way of saying it. Lost is a bit of a different... Also, he didn't have it at all. That's even worse. No, the glory... A God who doesn't have glory in the, in is not a true at God. At the time... No, no, no. Says, that's only your interpretation. So what we're saying is, in his humanity, yeah. he had to humble himself and as make certain concessions in order to exercise the humanity. So what that means is, is he's not exercising his divinity all the time because he has to also exercise his humanity so it is a case of having to work the truth how that precisely works we don't know okay because that's again the complexity of that specific specific situation which is not unpacked in bible we don't have scripture that defines it in that detail okay all when you say know, exercising wait wait let's let's try to understand this a fully god has the full glory of God. Do you agree with that statement? No. So again, the problem is you're trying to. His God doesn't even have full the glory. Complexity of this free I'm just, just, just trying you to. Can't do it. You said no, no. You tried to explain many things no, about no, God no. which God so didn't tell you. Doing, we can't do you it. said it's God does not. He did not exercise his divinity. The level. Of wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You added so many things in that statement which is not in the Bible. So why do you have the freedom to tell about God what you don't? what you have not explicitly been told but when i try to do that you want to stop me right. why the double standards no, wait 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 listen to what listen to what i'm saying when jesus is praying for the glory and he's asking god to give him the glory so if he gives him the glory then he will be able to glorify god am i right 
read it again. John, yeah, one, yeah, sorry, John 17, 1. Can you please read it again? Oh, that is correct. Okay, because in case we forget, yeah, I might have forgotten. Yeah, because Just read it again. Read, yeah, read that sure. statement again. The hours come. Glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. Okay, so, so you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given him. Okay, so when he says, give me the glory so I can glorify you. Yeah. The question is this. Could Jesus have glorified God without that glory that he's seeking? Not under that arrangement, no. Good, so Jesus can't even glorify God. Because that's you see, he needs the glory. Wait, wait, wait. He needs the glory in, in order for him to even glorify God. Now, this is the man or the God man that who's, who, who he claims to be this almighty God. He cannot even glorify his God. That's, okay, go to uh, go read the next statement exactly now. Come on. What that's saying, by the way. Well, that, that is what he's saying. He says, "Glorify me, no, no, so I can glorify you." What we are saying here is that is the arrangement that Christ, arrangement. as a human, is saying to the Father that as human, he didn't say as human. He, yeah, because he's human. He has always been human. No, no. He's always human. No, he wasn't always human. So let's not keep diverting on other things. Let's just stick to these verses. Okay. Let's stick to the verses so that we can at least get unpack this first chapter verse. Verses 1 to 5, you see what your interpretation, what you've understood it. Okay, fine, I've gone. Because you read it. The full context, okay. and you're picking these little bits out and so, going down a certain avenue. In fact, I, I just repeated what was in there. It no, says, no, glorify no, me no, so no. I can glorify you. So Simple as that. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're putting a particular connotation to it. What connotation? connotation? That he cannot glorify that God? He can't glorify without the glorification. In fact, I asked you that and you agreed what with we're me. What we're saying is, <laughs> you agreed with me, Ray. Son, the Son, in the sense of the, the Son, it's making a proclamation as a human that... And fully God. Don't just say human. You know when it comes to his weakness, they always say as a human, as a human. Yes. But you forget the fact that he is also fully God. So this fully God cannot, as, cannot no, glorify his God without the glory given to him. Himself. So certain aspects of his divinity um, wasn't what, being exercised. What does that mean? Human. What does that mean? Does that mean that he knew the hour but he says, I don't know the hour? The, You'd have to read all the scriptures related to, to what? unpack that. Simple, to get, to simple get, question, Ray. Are you saying that Jesus... Wait, wait. That, are you, are you saying... No, no, not this. This is Mark 13, 32. Are you saying that Jesus actually knew the hour, but he said, I don't know the hour? So, no. so, he's, also, so he's actually lying then? No, no, no. He's either telling the truth okay, or the lies. I, 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 telling a lie. No, no, Because no. you can't have it both ways. No, no, different context. No, uh, <laughs> not different. Not okay, anyway, go to the next verse. Come on. So... Go to the next verse. Verse 2. So I just want to clarify this. So anyway, what we really the important bit that's being missed, and I think it's a bit of a red herring, is the fact that Jesus can have the glory that the Father has. No, he didn't say glory the Father has. He didn't say that. Stop lying. He says, give me the glory that I had. You're reading verse 5, by the way. Let's yeah. let's stick to uh, verse 2 and 3. Why did you skip those? Three, four, and, two, three and 4. One more second, right? Oh, is that the one he highlighted? That's why he read that. Right, He's highlighted the one, verse 5, which the Trinitarians always love. When we discuss let verse me, 3, they go straight this. to verse 5. Let me read this while in your commentary. Please. Okay, go on. Verse 2 and 3, right, come on. So, right. so let's just take this bit by bit. So then it says, since you, the Father, has given him authority over all flesh. Given. So, so Christ has all authority. Given. Say given authority. Yeah, yeah. He has been given authority. So this by whom? Once, please, you're missing the point. I'm not. Jesus, has all authority. Now it's not, it doesn't matter whether it was received from the Father, it's the fact that he has it and he can exercise, has the ability to have the authority over all flesh, and it explains what it is, to give eternal life. So who can have authority to give eternal life to all? Shall I answer that? Who is that? Shall I answer that? Can that be a human being? Shall I answer? What do you think? I'm saying, did, was, did Jesus have that authority or was he given by a higher authority to do what, whatever he was given the authority that's to do? To no, that is because that is a key not bit which you, because you see the that's reason. I can explain that later, but that's not. No, 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 it is because the, no, the thing is that the thing there that's is that the key question, term which you missed over there, which you did not even touch upon deliberately for a reason is that he was given because authority. No, hear me out, hear me out. The queen gives you power. Does that mean you had the power of the queen? Yes, if the Queen gave me everything that the Queen can do, mm -hmm. everything that the Queen can do, then I am as good as the Queen. Then you're the Queen? As good as no, you're not. if you're as good as the Queen, would you be would you be having any authority if the what Queen did not give you? Between me and you, if, you are, if I have everything that you have. Ray, would you have and the same authority? No. If I'm going to be at the same level as you. But he didn't say it didn't say same level. He was as good as the father. 
Jesus was a human Any God. Ask him. Everything. No, he said everything. Any stability. Oh, so hold on. No. Did, did he not say? Did he not say this is this is when he was on earth? Did he not say that that is in earth? We're talking about authority. Don't forget, he's got this flesh but, but as well. But you said if you're exactly as a queen, what's the difference? Between We're not talking us? about him appearance. We're talking no, 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 about, about in essence. The same no, in authority. In authority. You're talking about the authority. Yes. So did he have the authority as God Almighty when he was a human being? Good question, by the way. Is it is the worst too? No, I don't find no. So, so you're saying it, 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 it depends in what mood he is. Sometimes he's like fully God, sometimes he's like empty God. The Father, this is the point I'm trying to say here, the Father gave the authority over all flesh, eternal life of all flesh to the Son. When he was, when point, he was on earth, right? The point is this, 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 this these are red herrings. The point it's is not red herring, it's a very it important question. At this point. Yes. Who can receive all of flesh, uh, so eternal life, authority over it? Eternal life okay. of all flesh. I will answer that question and this time please That's look at the entire one. verse and not just a subset no, of the no, verse. No, no, okay. No, no, you're, what are you doing is you're, you're looking at the entire verse and then you're looking only a subset of it which you want to focus on. You you're completely, wait, wait, what are you doing there? What are you, and you're telling us, Rattering, I can't believe this, honestly. Skipping. No, you're skipping instead of no, looking at the, that point. No, I'm, I'm, taking, the, that I'm point. taking the verse in entirety, unlike you're you. That point. No, you're not, I'm not, I haven't even explained it. I'm taking the entire world. Again, answer to Wait, give me the chance. Who receive the authority of the old flesh? What does that tell you about the son? Why are you looking at only the part of the verse rather than the whole verse? Because that's the bit that you haven't answered. No, but the verse that came, the passage, sorry, the point that's which the came. Key point to prove my point. Wait, at least listen to the question. Yeah. Stop interjecting. The verse. Or the, or the word that you actually missed, which is the most important, is, is a term that was given to him. So, you know, you gave the example of the queen. That was very good, actually. If the queen did not give you any authority, would you have authority? No. Exactly. Right. So, who's, who is the important person? The one who gives you the authority or the one who is given authority? Who is the higher in authority? Right, here, here's the point. What you're trying to do is... Can you answer without yeah, trying yeah. to be... Yeah, let me explain. Trying to be the victim me, all the time? No, no, let me explain. Because what the misunderstanding is, is who has authority, who gives authority, mm -hmm. is not a distinguishing determination it is. It of is. higher... It is. Actually, it is. It is. Like you said, you will not have the authority unless the Queen way, give it to you. It's no. the way the arrangement within the Godhead. So, there are, so for example, Jesus was given uh, the role of being the judge of eternal life like I said, to all flesh. That is specifically yeah, a it's... role only to the Son. No, at that time, yes. Because at that time, he had the authority. You know, during the time of Moses, Moses had the authority to tell the people because he was the one in charge. Moses is the one who told what is allowed, what is permitted, and what is not permitted because that is what he was doing, the work of God. God judges mankind to whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. Red herring, red herrings, red herrings, that is red herrings. Okay, you know, you, you know, if you look at, if you look at the example of a company, when you have a CEO, the CEO allocates the roles just like over here Jesus was allocated a role by God now the, the CEO is still God Almighty he's the one in charge he's the chief commander who gives the roles to both the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ yes wait 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 don't interrupt let me finish now if he says that once they are given this role this important role they don't become God Almighty they still remain the servant of the master who gave them that authority so you know it says over that he was given authority over all flesh what does that mean when a prophet during eternal life, no 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 it's not just eternal life what does it mean by giving eternal life in uh, uh, sorry in uh, the book of ezekiel 18 it says when a person repents of his sins and the sins can be as high as the mountains yes they are forgiven they will have life eternal now who is saying this this is in the book of ezekiel now is Ezekiel God because he was saying that if you do this you'll have eternal life so what it means over there that Jesus is given the uh, the authority over all flesh and the authority of uh, eternal life it means if you follow his way then you will have eternal life like he says he's a he's a way the truth and the life when he says he's the word he's a way means if you follow the way of this prophet and this messenger Jesus Christ and then you will have the truth and if you follow the way and the truth, then you'll have eternal life. That's all it means. It doesn't mean he's God, all, God Almighty. Because the next verse itself says that the only true God is the Father. He doesn't say to himself. Right. Now you so, say so it. The problem with that is, 
as I said, what has not been answered there, inconveniently maybe, is when you look at this verse, when the Father and the Son, and the Son is referring here that to receive authority over all flesh, okay? And we can see further down in Scripture about how the Father gives the Son authority to be the judge, to give eternal life to all mankind. So, we again have to ask the question, who can be given all the authority over in life? So the one... Anyone who's, that God wishes. Exactly. Right, but, 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 but who... So who, has, who can receive the power to be miracles? Do you think you and I... Like, no, 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 but this is Moses. more than just a miracle. No, no, but like... This is, this is responsibility of all life. Who has the power to spit the sea? Anyone that God wishes. This is a responsibility of all flesh, eternal life of all flesh. Can you be given to, to anything less than God? Yeah, if God wishes to. But no, you're better. Authority of flesh, I've already told you what it means. You were not listening. I said it means he, as a messenger, has authority over them. So they have to believe and obey him in everything that he says. And if they disobey him, it is as if they are disobeying God Almighty. Really you are just repeating yourself now, Ray. Yeah, eternal life means they have to follow his way. Then they have the eternal life. It talks about, it is, well, when you look in the context, we will look at other scriptures. Yeah, clearly, I've already explained that to you. No, but it's incorrect. The it's disciples correct. are given the authority to rule to judge here, as well. What we're talking about here is that the Father gives the Son eternal life. The Son has got all the authority, okay? Yeah, you're repeating yourself, Jay. Right? That's all you're yeah, doing. Yeah, because you're just not getting the point. I think we got the point, no, but you I didn't. You have. Okay, anyway, we'll go to the next verse. Right. Let's move on. That he has eternal life. Then yes, he does talk about the Father is the only one. Read it, read it. You read the other verses. Read this one. That is the eternal life that you know, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Okay, why does he distinguish between the two? I agree this is a complex verse, because when you read it in the way you read it, it could suggest... How do you read it? When I know what I know, I understand the context that he doesn't exclude himself can you just explain the verse? I'm not telling you what it is not. Why do you avoid interpreting that verse? Yeah. We are not asking you what it is not. Explain what it is. Shall I say why? If I take that verse, please, can I actually explain it without you interrupting me? You're very similar in the way you're styled here. I don't know if it's a Muslim style, will it? But here comes a victim card. Yeah, 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 because they have seen on camera how much you're interrupting me. For everyone to see. But you interrupt as well. I have to stop you many times. It's a matter of degrees then. Yeah, yeah I think we should finish now. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you why. Okay. Do you want to explain verse 3 or not? So what I'm saying is this, let me quickly just say. Yeah, go on. Within the verse itself, we have many verses where we cannot look at the verse in isolation. Because we could fall in the trap of, of going against what we understand by the true reconciliation of Scripture. So when we read the Scripture in a much more entire, full sense, a more total sense, when we get all the Scriptures relevant to this But you were passage. fine with reading the other two. Yeah. Then when you got to no objection to that. You so didn't want to interpret so it or read it. When the other two verses, so he didn't give that example, so, so that excuse. Get, when we look at the scholarly interpretation of the Is anything else going on? It talks about anything else going on there? one defining it by saying true God versus non-false God. And then he talks about... There's no true God and false God. Only true God because in context, he's not excluding himself. He is. he is. Only true God is the Father. Only is exclusive to God the Father. He doesn't include himself in the verse, but he says he was sent by God. So he's not like forgetting himself. He's saying... Yes. No, in terms of, no, in terms of the, that piece specifically about identifying yeah. the Father the only one true God. He God and himself in the verse. Yes. 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 God and, and, and myself is talking about... He says the only true God, the Father, That's and God. Jesus Christ whom we have sent. So in, he does exclude yeah. himself. He includes but himself he as only the Christ, not as God. He includes himself as only Christ. In knowing, but in the only true Father of God, cannot mean only ex excluding himself. Because when you look at other scriptures, oh mean, my God! No, no, because you, you have tied yourself into a knot no, just no, no, to get no, yourself no, no, out no, of this predicament, which is inevitable. And here's what I'm saying: so we have to look in John 5:23, where it talks about you have to uh, honor the Father, the Son, as much as you honor the Father. Yeah, honoring doesn't mean worshiping. You can honor your mother, doesn't mean you worship your mother. Can you? Yeah, yeah, but what? When you, you know, like in the Quran, we say, Atiyu Allah, Atiyu Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. It doesn't mean we worship the Messenger, we obey Him, yes. When you honor the Father as much as the, the Son, how can you do that? So it didn't say as much as the Father. It didn't say as much as the Father. You, you, you added that in. the Son is less than God. How can you honor the Son as much as the Father? You know, I'll give an example which you won't come out. It says in the Bible, in the Bible, it says in the book of, uh, I think, Ephesians or somewhere, it says, Submit to the wife, it says, submit to your husband as to the Lord. Yes? So using the same terminology used, are you telling me that the wife worships 
her husband? So, so what we have to do here, and this is another strategy. I'm going to answer that question. What we're doing here is, and I'll answer that question in this way, is that when we interpreted examples referring to the human examples, we've got to be careful not to be ex uh, absolutely 100% identical. We're mirroring that interpretation to a divine example. So when we talk about the divine relationship, that is very different to the human relationship. There are similarities, of course, but we can't be too literal and just taking a human example and defining it identically. So why do you do that with Jesus? Exactly, awesome. double standards. Huh? So Jesus is also human, so don't take it literally when he says... Um, yeah. By the way, you know, in John 73, he keeps saying that Jesus doesn't exclude himself being the only true God. But like you said correctly, in the same, in the same sentence, in the same uh, scripture, Jesus says, you the only true... Wait, wait, stop it, stop interrupting. You the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So he makes a distinction between himself and the only true God. Indeed. What is what is the distinction? Again, yeah, what is the distinction he makes? That he is the Christ, he is the Messiah, yeah. and who is the only true God? Who is the only true God? What? Who is the only true God according Yahweh. to him? Father. Father. Yes, the Yahweh is not in the New Testament. Okay? So don't try to use this no, trick words which are not in there. What do you mean Yahweh is the same God? Are you saying Yahweh died on the cross? Did Yahweh die on the cross? The God said Jesus is that's the flesh. No, no, what do you mean the you flesh? Know that wait, wait, what do you mean the flesh? That is what death is. It is when the flesh, when the soul suffers when from the flesh. Died, it was the flesh that died, not his divinity. So who was crucified? The Yahweh or who? Who was crucified? Was the Yahweh crucified? Jesus that died, George. Was Yahweh crucified? The, 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 the three in one yeah. and the fact that the hypostatic union, which is the true nature of Christ. None of these are in the Bible? Yes, it is. No. Nope. It's a complex nature that you cannot simplify in the way you're trying to logically simplify that's the problem none of the prophets none of the prophets did any other prophet or Moses believe that or preach that it's a good point in scripture we could do this as a separate subject how there are indications of Christ's ability in the Old Testament for which the prophets had an understanding a not full understanding but a understanding something that could send you to hell so, so he's saying the prophets did not have the full understanding but this guy here has a full understanding wow this is what I call putting down the prophets of God the chosen ones of God can't believe it the audacity what happened prior to that not all that detail was revealed in the Old Testament some of it was, was, was developed in the New Testament. And that's the reason, because God had a reason. So there are indications about the Christ coming, that there would be a human, there would be a redeemer. There are indications in scripture of this Christ coming. Respect the Messiah, somebody yeah. will be killed. Yeah, so there are. Somebody get killed. So there are. It's completely the opposite. No, no. It talks about in the Old Testament. It, it describes you know what the Messiah means. means. You know what it means. Somebody who be a it means a number of things. Okay, what does it mean literally? It, it, in the recital means a number of different things. What does it mean literally? There is not literally. a precise single meaning. No, no, in the context, of, in the context of Christ, literally, the you know Messiah, if you ask the Jews, what was their understanding of what did they mean by the Messiah? Not God, definitely. It would be the Saviour. Yeah, but not God, right? Not, Savior. not God Almighty. It, it's, it's, it talks about the seed. Can you ask my question? It, yeah, it talks. The Messiah is Means going what? to be. Means the, what? Exactly. It's, it's the Saviour in this context. No, no, no. There is no one Literal meaning. meaning. There is no one meaning. There are many Messiahs in the Bible. Yeah. Cyrus was a Messiah. Yes, and there are many but meanings. He was, he a, was he a Saviour? So why are you picking one? I'm just asking you. He's, a, he's asking you the literal meaning. Literal meaning, what does that mean? There are many literal meanings of Messiah. No. Okay, give, me, give us one. God, give us one. No, Savior. What do you mean it's not? What well, do you think something as important as how many gods there are is important that even Moses should know it? And yeah, he does know it. He does know it. So, so he knew that. He clearly really knows, he clearly knows that, yeah, that there's only one true God. Okay. And that is Yahweh, which we try. He, he, know he knows that. What's Yahweh? He Yahweh. So how about three and one? I just explained it. He doesn't know what it means. There is a. Uh, we believe that they have a level of understanding of it. We so have the same level of but understanding. Let me, yes, yes. But here's oh. the point. God did never put a determination on Moses to have that understanding as part of his salvation. His salvation was on the basis of what God revealed. It's based on the revelations to Moses that was the basis. Just like with Abraham. The basis of Abraham's uh, understanding was based on what he believed through the revelation and he was accredited righteousness 
from that. So it's God hiding the truth from Moses. It's not a case of hiding, it's what was relevant at the time. Did Abraham know Yahweh? So what do you time. mean relevant? So but was God not three in one back then? Was so what we're saying thing? is the details of exactly Jesus's from Jesus's uh, uh, birth, uh, his ministry, the teachings, exactly what he's going to say to these people, what he's going to say to this person, and so on and so on. As you see in the New Testament, that detail is not revealed in Old Testament. No, but so, it's so, relevant so, at the time. So the prophets weren't given that level of detail, but they were given enough that was relevant. So how did they believe in salvation then? What was salvation to them? An understanding of what was revealed mm -hmm. in terms of believing in God, believing in His laws, and being obedient and true to God. So no human sacrifice, yeah? So Required in, for salvation. The important point was this, as we discovered later, it is not the doing the law that saved them, but it was the genuineness in the belief that resulted in following the law was key. So if you follow the law without truly believing, your God will not give you eternal life. So that Why would you follow the law without believing? So, well, it doesn't make sense. You can do that because if you if you just follow the light, if you follow, oh, I just got to do that, and tomorrow I just got to put things in the bin there. I've got to dismantle this. I'm just going to do it because I see it in the law. I'm going to follow it. What they're not doing is try to understand God okay. and get a relationship with God. Okay. Abraham uh, described. Abraham was right. cannot understand God. Now you said you have to understand God. They're level. So we don't understand Did you say, you, you, we you, said you cannot understand God not fully, not fully. But no one understands God fully, God we know that. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what God revealed. What God revealed. Exactly, that's what I told you earlier. What, what does he reveal? He never reveals the Trinity. <laughs> well, that's what I would say. <laughs> so we have to understand what God revealed. Yes. Through what? Exactly. Through the scriptures. What scripture? The Bible. He mentioned to you. God, uh, uh, Jesus does not know the hour. Is he God? He just said, I do not know. Don't Why forget, he, he, he no, was also exercising his humanity okay. and he humbled you, you, But he was fully God when he said that. He when he said that, he was fully God. Right. Was he not? Was, another example right. of how Jesus was he telling a lie? And you keep ignoring... Hey, hey, can I explain, some that, can some I explain that point? So that one of the points on that point is, is that between the Godhead, they have roles. And in those roles, they're not all doing exactly the same thing. So that is the Who is way. in charge of those roles? So, Who is in charge of those roles? Depends. Father, always, the Father, remember. They are not co-equal, because one knows the hour, the other doesn't know. One is immortal, the other is mortal. One is in charge of the roles, the other is not in charge of the roles. husband and wife. In a way, you could say the, the husband is the head of the, is the, is the head of the of the partnership. What does it mean? But, but, what does it mean by head? But, 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 Wait, what does but, it mean by head? But, but, okay, but that doesn't make the wife any less than the So husband. what does it mean by head so then? Essence, Explain. Because they're both human, they're both equal in essence. What I'm trying to say is the son is equal in essence because he has the divine essence of God. Was he not equal? Though? In responsibility. Responsibility on. Ray, you give the example of the husband and wife. Can you explain to us what does it mean by the head? Responsibility. Ray. So the responsibility Ray, 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 listen. is given to the father only. Ray, Ray, Ray. The father <laughs> has the responsibility of revealing the hour. Revealing the hour. Did you know what that only means? The father you know what it means by revealing the hour? That means the others Don't are on a need to know basis. That's the agreement of the arrangement. Exactly, on a need to know basis. What kind of a God is on a need to know basis? The one who is not that all knowing. The one who is not all knowing. Your, your, and that's the reason I ask you, who is in charge of that authority? It is always the father. The you remember the son, even after he he basically uh, puts all his enemies under his feet. Is all knowing, but between that Godhead, it doesn't mean every single component of the Godhead are knowing all everything. What do you mean Yahweh is all knowing? It's the father all knowing. It's, wait, wait, what do you mean Yahweh is all knowing? Are you saying the you son is not Yahweh? Are you saying the son is not Yahweh? Is there anything that the father doesn't have that Jesus has? <laughs> He's stopped ignoring, I saw he started ignoring me because now... Like, you know, they're split. Not in quality, not in essence, but later with essence. No. Okay, but in the essence they are the same. The father, does he have a human nature? I'm talking about the divine nature. Yeah, right? I'm talking about the same in... Nature. No, no, he says same in essence. You know what same in essence means? Means when you have one in person... Of his divinity. Wait, try to understand the question. When you have one person, that person is not two persons, it's one person. That person has a nature or his essence as is known. The Father and the Holy Spirit. Oh, you tell me. Are you telling me a person? In the Bible. So where do you, where is the essence? Where, did you get it from? where is the essence in the Bible? Show me. Huh? Where? Huh? Why quiet now? I don't understand what you mean. I'm ah, now all of a sudden I forgot English. No, no, it just doesn't make sense what you're saying. Okay, so you're telling me a person has two natures or one nature? 
Well, a person has Jesus. one nature or two natures. In Jesus' case, yes, two. In your na in your case. In Jesus' case. In your case. Yeah, that's per scripture. In your case, what is it? One nature or two natures? Depends. Uh, what do you mean depends? How many natures have we got? So in when do you have two in natures? Human nature, we have we have one person, one nature. Oh, you're in the Father, no, no, we are one nature. But I'm not talking about the Father. I'm talking about you, nature. Ray. I'm talking about you, yeah. not the Father. I only have one nature. Good. How many natures does the Father have? One. Good. How many natures does the Holy Spirit have? One. How many natures does Jesus have? Two. So how are they same in nature? <laughs> how are they same in nature? The divine nature. They, unless, you know these guys forget maths That's when it comes to the that divinity. For a, them, two is, is equal to one. For them, three is equal to one. Okay? No, it's not a fallacious point. When you have two natures, that is more than one nature. The second nature is not defining that Jesus in his divinity has two natures. So you're telling me... It's a unique situation. Good. So you're... Are you God tells me that's how it is. Ray, God doesn't tell you he has two natures. You made that up. No, it doesn't. Show me where he says God has two natures. I challenge you. Huh? Show me where. Not in that exact words. Exactly. So, so stop saying things but which is not in the Bible. You know, he kept he, he, Moses he objected to us saying things which are not in the Bible, but he says it all the time. In a three and one. He doesn't know. He knows. He didn't preach three and one. Brother, does he? Does the Bible say? I have no idea. There is no law about what the knowledge of the hour given only to the Father. Yes. Only the Father knows. Mark thirteen thirty two. We know what Moses. Let me put it this way: the prophets of the Old Testament. We don't have a detailed well, we know that Moses preached exposition one God, right? of everything that they believed in. We don't have it. We know that Moses no, no, preached no, 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 one God. Yes, we do agree that. But not three in one but God. We, no, no, None of them. Even the disciples don't believe three in one. No, no, no. What I would disagree is, is there is an uh, indication that they had an understanding to a degree of the plurality of God. Where? 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 Okay. Where does it say God is plural? We can bring Something that, next that week. important. We're you know, that only the polytheists believe God is a plural. Quite a detailed explanation, but I can Why, provide that. Three and one, at least. Uh, not in that context. But, no, by the way, have you noticed? Have you noticed the term? Have, have, you, have you noticed the term he used? The plurality of God. Yes. Yes, which means God is more than one. <laughs> that is called that is called polytheism. No, it's not. It's called polytheism. No, it's plurality, not plurality is pol is in many gods. Plurality in persons in the one God. Exactly, more than yeah, one person. Wait, wait. Where is it says God is more than one person in the Bible? You're asking for a specific word. No, but you use that specific word. Why would you use words which are not in the because Bible? That is the conclusion I come to. Because the based on what? The based on the Bible. You say, you, say we don't have you say we don't have the teaching on of the Moses. Basis of, the basis of scripture. Okay. You say we don't have like Moses teaching three in one. You imagine. Well, like, we don't. So we don't know what. Uh, but he fully. did preach that there's one God, right? Yeah. In terms of one true God, yes. Yeah. But what I'm not talking. Well, why do you think about, there's going to be something missing? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this: the details of the Godhead is not something that the prophets knew provided in scripture in detail. So we have it. So it's a not even Jesus. One Not second. even Jesus did. Forget the prophets. But what we have got is, however, an indication that the prophets did have an understanding of nope. it. Of a one God. Nope. We, can share that. we can share that next time because I'll have to put that together. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of research involved. Uh, I don't know off by heart, but we can provide that. There is many scriptures. When you think something that There are many is... scriptures in the Old Testament that can provide indication of the Godhead. That's all I can say. And none of the Jewish people, who, which is their language, no, about, they understand it, but the Christians who came scripture. thousands of years after, the they always seem to understand better. Wow. But the Jews really. came through I, I, years after scripture. My saviour is not on the Jews, it's on God. You're so, Jewish. Your, uh, your God is Jew. Yes, but the scripture, <laughs> he says, the truth it is on a Jew, God's actually. Truth it is based is on a Jew, Jew, if you ask me. God's and this is not truth, to mock their God, but this is what he said himself, that Jesus was a Jew. Your saviour was a Jew. God said, do not... Somebody's Jewish and he does not believe. Yeah. But it's, it's not because, problem. it's not about, no, 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 because you're misunderstanding me. I'm not saying that you go to, we can't go to Jesus because it's not here. But, but what I'm saying is, we go to God in what way? So there are a number of ways we can go to God. Apart from praying, of course we can pray to God as direct communication, but we've also got his scripture. I really have a problem and with in the, scripture, the word pray. Do you understand? Okay. What is that? What's the Bible one second, says One second, one second. Let me just explain, finish the point. But the way that we, the Bible, God talks about how we come to him in understanding his truth is through his scriptures. That's why the Bible is there. So in the Bible, we do have these truths. And that's why Christians are qualified what they're qualified and believe what they believe. Well, I'm just highlighting. The and they're different what they're different. The word user. No, no, a true The use of the word pray. Pray. Well, they all claim to be true Christians. The Catholics claim to be true Christians. You claim to be true Christians. They all claim to have the Holy Spirit. They all have different books. They can't even agree which books is, is from God. One, 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 uh, one sex, no, the core, even the core teaching. One sex, one, one sex, uh, what do you say, uh, book 
What is Holy Holy book is another's apocrypha. Okay, Pop. so don't tell me they all agree, please. By the way, uh, what, 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 by the way, what is this? What is this understanding that the Christians have that yeah. you will become the bride of Christ? Right. Do you believe that? Yes. So you you will marry Christ? It's, it's, it's Isn't that a bit uh, no, you're, you're queer? A human term here in the wrong context. So Wait, that is a term it's used in the. Yeah, shall I read what Paul it says means here? It in a different way. So oh. when we're talking about brides of Christ, yeah, we're, this is how it means by this, and this is talking about the church. So what it means is the marrying, the coming together of the church with Christ. This is about the kingdom of God. This is where Jesus and His church are going to come together and reign. So it's a marrying, a coming together where we unite as Christ as head of the of the God of, of the kingdom and his when was that? and when? his church. When? Well, that's which church? Was, Catholic church, Protestant church, the church, the church Mormon church, church, Jehovah's Witness not, church. No, no, which church? Not in that sense. Church, as in those that truly follow him on the basis of the criteria that oh, he's laid out. So why can't they just call you followers instead of calling you a bride of Christ? Because it sounds a bit, I don't know, because they, because very, very, what you say. We're talking about a close relationship. So this is the big difference between the Christian view. It's that we have a close relationship with God, where in Islam you don't. You mean close as a husband and wife? As in we speak to the God directly, we have a relationship you don't speak with to the God. Father, you speak to the Actually, you don't. You have to go via Jesus. You can't speak yeah. to, the, to God directly. It has to be in the name of Christ. But we do, we can address God, uh, the Father directly what is but, the father's name uh, but we always make what, sure what's, what's the father's when name when we do that when we do that mm. we do say in the name of christ we okay so, that, so you're not talking directly. because it's a union of the two it's union? union of the two okay. so, there's a mediator. so we're working with the relationship when I'm, we when we speak to the father a middle man. we always bring in father son and spirit yeah. in that prayer but, Je but jesus told you only to pray in the name of the father so you said you have a close relation to god but you can't speak to the father directly yes i can yeah, oh, you need yes. to, you need to mediate it. Okay, here, here's the words that, that... Even that prayer is, you know, Father, hallowed be thy name. It starts off by your first first words in that prayer is Father. Exactly, so not the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father's already heard that voice, so therefore you must have said that directly because you haven't even put Christ into it yet. Do you see my point? But you don't say in, in Christ. You don't say. So what, what we mean by that is we always bring Christ in our prayers. We always yeah. say... What in other words, they don't do what Jesus told them to do. Prayer, they have their own way of praying. Say, so I Jesus told them only to pray to the Father, but they bring in their own interpretation from no, the church. No, 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 yes, it is. No. That's the reason you are married to the church, not Jesus. No, no, no. Sorry, you are married when to. When we are praying, you're married to we Jesus. Always, yeah, actually. Always include Christ <laughs> in our prayers thing. and the Spirit in our prayers because we see them as all three in one, and they are in harmony. They are always together as a single God. Oh, they are they're not in harmony. One. And that's why we pray. Je to Jesus. In, in our Jesus was killed by his own creation. The Father was not. Even if you say that's just the flesh, the yeah, even if you say that's the flesh, yeah. okay, the, here's a question that I need to ask you. Is Jesus still having uh, or retaining his humanity now? He still has his body, yes. Good. So, is the body part of the Trinity? Pin drop silence. No, no, yeah, because I'm trying to answer this in a, in a, in a good way. Answer it, go on. I know where you're going to go with this. Go on, answer so, in a good way. Is the body part of the let Trinity? Let me put it this way. Uh, the level of way you're trying to define the divinity, and this is again my point. I didn't ask, define, I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, we'll be trying to get answers to the divinity of God and understanding that three in one. Mm -hmm. We can only go by what the scriptures tell us. So the scriptures doesn't precisely tell us how that human nature sits within God as now he's in heaven. But all we do know is that Christ still has his full divinity and God essence as God in heaven. He also has his humanity in heaven as well. That's as far as I can tell you, because that's all that has been revealed. So you don't know if it's... If it, I don't know beyond that. If you want to go beyond that, you have okay, to... Okay, so basically you understand that Jesus, he's one of the persons of the Trinity. He has two natures. Yes. So you're telling me that one nature sits outside the Trinity and one inside no, the I Trinity. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know precisely how that works. Okay, does any Christian know this answer? We haven't got it yet. It's not, if it's not in scripture, we don't know. We Do don't you have the answer to this question? Is the... Is within the Trinity, is there a human nature? I'm, I'm spectator. Oh, you're the spectator. Okay. Any other oh, Christians? I don't see any Christians here. The Trinity is relating to... Are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. Okay. The question is this. Jesus has two natures, human and divine. You believe that? Yeah. The dual nature, the hypostatic union. So the question I asked Ray here, what's your name? Yeah, Eugen. Eugen? Yeah. Okay, I'm Hashim. So Eugen, the question is this. Because Jesus has two natures, and there are three persons in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yep. And the Son has two natures, human and divine. The question is this, 
Is the humanity, the human nature of Jesus?